Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Wood Resurrected. Today we're going to be working on episode three of our pallet wood dining table. So before I get started, I do want to say thank you to anyone who has subscribed recently. I am still working towards that thousand subscriber mark, so anything helps. And to go on top of that, if you hit the notifications icon, you will be notified when I upload the next video, so you can just hop in and check it out. So it kind of works uh, works together and works well. So hopefully you like what you see. And I also want to let you know that most of the tools, I'm going to try to get as many of them as I can that I use in this video, will have a link in the description. So you can pop in and you can check it out or pick one up for yourself if you like. One last thing before we get into it. I'm going to try and stay away from speeding up the, the video from this episode. And I want to try and see if that's a little more cohesive and uh, if it works a little better. So if you would, please leave a comment and let me know what you think, whether you prefer the old style or the new style. And that way I can uh, do what makes you guys the happiest. So that being said, let's, uh, let's get into this episode. So if you've been watching the video so far, you know I've been working with some, some new pieces of wood. And what these are going to be is this is going to be the skirt for our table. This is the support that goes underneath the table itself. If uh, you want to see the construction of the table, check out episode 2 and 1 of the same series. And you can see how that was done. But uh, So we're going to get started on the skirt. And so I've got these pieces and what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm measuring out the dimensions that I want and be again because I didn't have boards that were long enough to go the full length of the skirt I'm actually going to use a joint in the middle and then it's going to have a cross member that goes between both joints so the skirt is going to actually be six pieces it'll be two on each side one on each end and then the cross member that I just mentioned that goes across the center and these are going to be about two and a half inches tall and I believe they are going to be about six inches in from the end and I believe four inches in from the side. So that way we've still got enough support underneath our table that uh, it's not too close together so it'll actually support more uh, further out and that way it, uh, it's not all rickety and things like that. So all I'm doing is I'm marking these boards as to what I want to consider waste and what I want to keep and that way I can get the four boards that are the same and then it'll be two boards that are the same length for the ends and then uh, one in the center that's a little bit shorter. So you also may remember that during the process of putting the tabletop together and cutting the various boards that my blades were getting fairly dull. So what I ended up doing was I did some research and found a five inch excuse me, a 5 8 Arbor on Shopsmith. And I ended up picking one up and after it had arrived, I was uh, going through my tools because I picked the, the Shopsmith up from a guy and he gave me just a box of a bunch of stuff and I guess I didn't go through it all the way or maybe at the time I didn't know exactly what the various components were. But I found that I already had a 5 8 Arbor. It's a different model, but it is a 5 8 Arbor indeed. So I ended up getting some cheaper blades than the Shopsmith blades, and they were the 5 8 Arbor. I got a cross cut blade and a rip blade, and I was able to have an Arbor for each of them. And while I was at it, I decided that the, it was a fairly short, it was like an 8 inch wrench that I had that you could use to loosen the the nut on the arbor and so what it had what it was is it had a tendency to stretch open because it was uh, I, I would call it fairly chintzy but it was really a pain in the neck so I ended up getting a, a replacement wrench when I got the arbor so it works so much better and if you don't have one and you have a shopsmith I highly recommend picking one up it makes it so much easier. It's longer so you can actually get some leverage on it and you don't have to worry about it stretching or anything like that. So it's really made it easier. So all the boards are marked and what I'm doing is I've got the shopsmith set up. I don't have the fence on because I'm just doing a rough cut on these boards. 
All I'm doing is removing that waste that we marked. And I've just got the extension table leveled off with the, the main table and I'm just running them through and removing the waste so that we can get close to uh, boards that we can work with and we don't have to worry about as much of whether it had a twist or a cup or anything like that. A lot of these boards were not, I should say the majority of these boards were nowhere near perfect, flat, or straight. So I'm essentially removing some material. You'll see some of these have a, a cup in them, some of them are twisted, and all I'm doing is removing the pieces that I don't want so that we get as much straight board as possible so that we can work it down and get a nice flat even square board out of it. So at this point our goal is we want to get it so where we can run it through the planer and we want to remove any of the cup or the warp or twist or any of that stuff. So what we're going to need to do first is we're going to need to joint the, the wide sides of the board and in order to do that we're going to have to joint the ends like I'm doing now or I guess you'd say the narrow sides and that'll give us a, a nice even straight edge to run against the fence of the joiner so that we can get it through and we can run it and have a nice smooth edge for when we joint the wide side and then when we run it through the planer we can uh, we already have a, a smooth edge that we can run against a fence to rip them down to size. So I'm going to do this for all seven boards and that way we can prep them and get them run through the various processes. I believe I'm only taking off about a 30 second maybe up to a sixteenth of an inch per pass. So you don't have to take off a lot usually. Of course some of these are have got a bend to the board so it has to go through a bunch of times but either way we get them down so that we have our nice smooth edge and here you can see how easy it is to adjust the fence on a shopsmith jointer it's in the previous video I showed you the the end of this this jointer and it's got a a, it's like a two-part nut. The inside will lock down your fence as far as the angle and then it's got a rail that it slides on so all you have to do is pull it out and loosen the the lock nut or the bolt I guess and then you can slide your your fence in and out and you don't have to worry about it going out of square. And with the sides jointed and the fence adjusted to allow a three to four inch board across the joiner now we can run them through on the flat side and take off the, the deformities, if you will, so we can smooth them out and get them nice and flat so that we have a bottom flat surface that we can run through our planer. So we're gonna run through all of these and get one side flat. And I highly recommend using one of these, these push, I guess not really a stick, uh, a push plate, I guess. I don't know the proper term for it, I guess. But, uh, that way you can still keep the board down on the table and you can you have enough width on these push boards that you can actually put uh, pressure on either side of the board so that you can keep one side down and allow one up. So it helps to shave off with, if the board's got a twist in it or if it's cuffed on one end. So it makes it really helpful. Now that we have one side flat, as I was saying, now we can set up our planer and we can run these through and get both sides parallel so that we don't have any cup or twist and you can remove all the, the imperfections I guess you could say with as far as the, the shape of each board. So I'm going to run these through and get them down to I think it was approximately the same half inch as the ones we used for the tabletop. And once I get a smooth flat surface on that top side, then I can flip it over and do both sides of these boards. And that way I know that I've got a nice plain surface on both sides. And as you can see, I'm using a short board in front of each board that I'm surfacing, as well as a follow-up board. Of course, if it doesn't take any surface off, then I'm not too worried about the, uh, the back end board. I guess you could say so these are just kind of sliding right through but uh, the reason I'm doing each one at each uh, depth of the planer is because I don't want to make my 
boards from the front and the follow-up board too thin, otherwise they won't work in reducing the amount of snipe that uh, comes into these boards from running through the planer. So that's basically the purpose is when you put the board in front and behind, the wheels will pick up and roll on top of that board and that way the, the blade won't eat into it because the, the two wheels, think of it as a wheel on either side of a blade. So if you push it in, it lifts that front wheel up, but because the back wheel isn't lifted up with it, it'll dig a little bit down, further down into that board. So until both of the wheels are lifted and the blade is even with both wheels, it's gonna cut in. Same goes for the back end of the board. When one of the wheels falls off the end, it'll dig down into the board. So basically the front board and the back board allow it to be nice and level when the board that we're trying to resurface goes through. That way it's a nice, smooth, clean cut. One other thing to note is that I do have the shop vac connected to the out port on the planer so that it sucks up all of the sawdust and the material that we're removing from these boards so that we don't get dusted out and it's not floating around in our work area. So our current status is that all of our boards for the skirt are surfaced on three sides. We ran the narrow side through the jointer, then we surfaced one of the uh, flat sides. Then once that was done we ran it through the planer and surfaced the other side. So all we have left to do is run the remaining side of the board through the table saw to rip it down to width. And I've got my 10 inch rip blade on here with the 5 8 arbor and it works beautifully. It cuts like butter. So I've got that set up with the fence. We're cutting these down to two and a half inches. And uh, it's just a simple process of taking all of our boards for our skirt, running them through and making, making them all a uniform width. So now all we have to do is cut them down to length. So you might think that I'm running this through incorrectly, but what I'm doing is I'm trimming, uh, remember we left the, these long. So all I'm doing is I'm squaring up the end. I've got my miter gauge. I made sure that my miter gauge was nice and square. And I'm just trimming off one end. And then you can see the clamp there. You can't really see the board, but I do have the, the board clamp to the fence just like I did before so that we don't have to worry about the board binding on these longer boards that uh, reach out to the extension table. So all I did was I trimmed one end and then I switched the miter gauge to the other side of the blade. That's one nice thing about these Shopsmith table saws is that they have a, a miter slot on both sides of the blade. So I trimmed one side and then I switched sides and then ran it through and cut it down to length. And granted, I'm going to have to change the distance from the fence to the blade for each of the sets, but I can do the four side boards and then make an adjustment to my measurement and then do the two end boards and then one final adjustment for the board that goes across the center. All of our boards are now cut to length, so all we have to do is put the ends on them, so to speak. So the four corners of the skirt are gonna be mitered to a 45 degree angle and then the sides are going to be rabbited so that they uh, overlap so we're not doing an end grain and then the center board will just be more of pretty much an end uh, an end grain glue and uh, we may throw some screws into that so what I'm doing right now is I am setting up to do the 45 degree miters on the end and this is really slick with a shopsmith because I can take the table and I can rotate the table so that it's at a 45. A lot of times you have to, to turn on traditional table saws, you, you angle the blade to a 45 degree angle and you cut it that way. Whereas this one, you actually angle the table. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna angle our table to 45 degrees. And the easiest way to do that is there's just like most of the equipment that comes with Shopsmith, there is a, a lock and you loosen that and then you can tilt the table and there's another set screw so basically you go down and the 45 degree has a stop point the table will only tilt to 45 degrees so all you have to do is adjust that set screw to make sure that your your blade is 45 degrees from your table 
and from there you basically just have to, to set it up to run it through. You may see me sliding the board across the end and that's just to make sure that the board clears the end of the shopsmith table. So I want to make sure that this board doesn't snag on anything and in order to do longer boards you have to slide everything down to the end so that it'll actually clear the end of the table. And you can clamp the board to the miter gauge but I've, what I've found is I have a, a steady enough hand and a, a good enough adjustment by the eye that I can literally just incrementally move it up towards the end until the cut is exactly at the corner of where the end of the board is. So it's a nice perfect 45 with the point being right at the end. All right, so we're ready to set up the boards that will go down the sides. We want to join them together, but we don't want to use just an end grain joint. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up a kind of a, a jig, I guess you could say. Basically, I'm, I'm screwing two boards down that our, our side boards will be able to slide into, and then we can clamp that down, and all we have to do is run our, our router across the end to make our rabbit. So all I'm doing is I'm drilling pilot holes into these boards and into the, the table. And what this will allow me to do is this will allow me to specify where the screws actually go into the material. So this will keep the boards for this jig in place and where I want them. That way they don't shift or when I drive the screw into it, it doesn't split the, the board that I'm screwing down and everything just works a lot more smoothly. You just drill some pilot holes and then you throw some screws in and you make sure that they're nice and tight. And I'm also countersinking them just to make sure that they're below the surface of our boards so that our router will be able to slide across and actually be able to route the end of the board without snagging on anything so it'll be a nice smooth cut in the end of uh, our board to make our rabbit. And to make sure that the board is nice and tight in between the other two boards for our jig, I'm using a clamp to pull it tight before I put the screws into the boards. So that'll make sure it's nice and snug. And you can actually see, once I get this done, how nice of a snug fit this board is and how well it fits in there. It's almost uh, clamped in, but you can see right here, I can just slide it right in there and it still fits nice and snug. And with everything clamped down and the jig set, we're ready to route our rabbits into the end of our boards. So this will be the four sideboards that are getting the rabbits. And because of this jig, it's basically just a process of sliding the board in, clamping the top board down on top of it, making sure that you're uh, extended past the, the back board far enough, and then going in and uh, doing your rabbit, and then rinse and repeat for all four boards. And this completes all of the joints for the skirt, so we are ready to assemble. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to glue the, the rabbit joints together that uh, form the sides of the boards. It's just a matter of applying glue to both rabbits, spreading it out evenly, and then clamping them together. And as I did with the tabletop boards, I clamped them top to bottom and then clamped them together. The next step in the process is getting all of the miters on the corners glued together as well as the center. So what I'm doing is I'm applying a layer of glue to the center board and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drill pilot holes and then run two screws into each end just to hold those together and so because that board actually stacks on the outside of that is where the rabbit joint is so the the screws will actually hold the rabbit joint together as well as hold that, that cross member in place. And of course I also drilled a, a countersink in so those screws would be flush or slightly below the surface of the outside of the skirt. So this leaves us with a solid eye in the center, if you will, the eye being the sides and the, the cross member. That's all secured and glued together. So that gives us some rigidity for this next process. And I had some personal debate on it. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to use the pipe clamps to 
set the even amount of pressure from both sides or which process I should use that would be most effective and the one that I settled on was this one. So what I've got, if you can tell, is I've got two cargo straps laid around the skirt almost to the point where they're contacting the skirt itself and I've got them set up so all I have to do is pull the one side through and it will snug the whole thing up and then all I have to do is ratchet on one side and then make sure that the tension goes all the way around. And it takes a little bit of adjustment and checking once you get it tight, but the process that I'm using is I'm pulling each board out one at a time and I'm gluing the miters on it. Once I get the miters glued on those joints, then I move to the other end and do the same thing. Then I can set the end boards in and then I can snug up my uh, ratchet straps to snug everything up and then I'll go around with the square and make sure that everything is, that all the, the corners are held together snugly, that there isn't any gaps, that the, the miters are together properly, and I can also make sure that there isn't any, any warp or anything that's being pulled out of place. I think that'll about wrap it up for episode three. Okay, we got the boards from scratch. We got them planed down, we got them surfaced, we got the, the uh, ends jointed, and we got everything put together. Don't forget to leave a comment letting me know what you think of the editing process on this one versus the previous episodes. So thank you anyone who tuned in. I wanna remind you to please subscribe and hit that notification icon so when the next episode hits you can jump right in and check it out. I also want to remind you that any tools that you see that I used here, uh, if I can find them, I'll have them listed in the description so you can pop in and uh, get those for yourself if you like. So thanks for tuning in, stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.